to my right is Barry Van Hoosen. Um, we are three members of a seven member council um, and we consider uh, a variety of items and then make recommendations to the full council. Um, and I should mention down there to the left is Brody Walters and Mark Easterling from the Planning Zoning Division or Bureau or whatever the heck you are. Um, everyone good with the April 6 minutes? Yes. Yep. All right, we're good. Um, number three, th th this is the historic district garden stuff, Brody, you talked about last night. Um, um. No, that, that was not on the agenda. Because that oh, was no, no, a, is this the... That was going to be a pass through the council because he has an argument. Because yeah. we already talked about that. That's right. This is... Uh, this is the... Kate, uh, this is the one you were supposed to remind me about. Yep, this is the one that I'm reminding you of. Okay. Um, and... So this is the one that was presented by Mr. Rufty yep. to Planning Commission regarding his request to change the um, planning and zoning code, for lack of a better term, and the land use table. And planning commission made a couple of recommendations that they would be at least more comfortable with. And I guess my concern here, and I think the real issue is that this needs to be kicked for Mr. Rufty to be present, because... No. <laughs> My, cons my, my question is that, as I understand it, as the business was observed by Brody and I, at least, when we went in, people could walk in and get Super Supper's food, and they could walk in and get cupcakes at the location. I think that's fair. Is that correct, Brody? It depends upon what the goal of this committee is, or what council, or Mr. Rufty, and I don't have a position on that. But the Im proposed amendments from com Planning Commission say, note that the catering is allowed without walk-up or carry-out service. That would prohibit what is currently happening there. And I don't know what the goal is of these changes to no. For Mr. Rufty to be able to continue to do the businesses as he's doing them, for there to be modification. Yeah. Can you explain the rules? Yeah. Can I explain this? Yeah. Well, when when I, uh, Jonathan, I also visited there, and what he told us is that, and I heard a planning commission that Becky said said that I went there, in walked in as a person, and said, oh. Can I purchase something? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can purchase here. You can purchase. So I, per I was able to purchase a breakfast thing. I was able to go over and buy cupcakes. And he also has a fourth business of selling for a friend of his, I don't know who he but bread, too, a bread company. So, going on like what Kate was saying is, I, at least from my perspective, was that he was doing commercial business out of there, out of an industrial zone property. And so the recommendation, for, again, from my perspective, was to not not to have him reevaluate that part of it, which would be appropriate for the business there, and not sell the cupcakes or not sell the super suppers in that manner. And what he said about the super suppers is you're supposed to have belong to club, yeah, yeah. like a club or whatever. Yeah. And you can only go in there if you belong to the club, but you're still going in there and buying it ordering it and coming out, so it's still a commercial type business that he's running with the Super Supper. The same thing with the bread. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, the night we were there, no one came in, so I, I, I didn't know what he did. But we did ask him, he had some stuff off to the side, and he said that it's like a subscription thing. Right. You know, where you, but if you walk in, they'll it, sell it to you. Yeah, he said if, if, but if someone's coming in, they say, oh, to pick up their order, though, he said. They can grab this thing over here because it had just like side dishes or something. I did not have a prescription subscription and I was able to buy some. And, uh, okay, well, I don't know what he, he, I mean, he described that as a real incidental portion of what he's doing there. You know, when people come in to get their regular order, they say, oh, I see you got some. Well, and on his behalf, he did say that he needed to train some employees that that wasn't supposed to happen, but. Oh, is that right? 
but there are also I've come across even city employees that go I go I go there every week just to get bread or see what they have or I go in and see the bread thing. Pick, a, pick up cupcakes and it's they knew it as a commercial walk up oh, okay. and I I don't know it's how a bakery functions without a commercial walk up aspect like I don't know how the cupcake place survives if people can't just walk order their cupcakes and walk up and get them well, you said they do weddings and stuff like that. Weddings, parties. Part he was basically saying the catering and that some people choose not to pay the If I remember correctly, he said some people would rather not pay the delivery fee or they like being the people that transport to make right. sure. At least that was his reasoning, but I, I guess I'm going to ask the just blanket question is why is this a big deal? I don't is have it, a position I mean, one way or another. I'm simply pointing well, out that. I mean, proposed, anybody. I, I, I get the zoning differences. There, is, is there much, a safety issue? Is is it, it is much less expensive for him to be able to use industrial property than to pay the cost of renting in a commercial property to run okay, a commercial business. Okay, so it's unfa unfair to the industrial. Okay. There is also some concern that has been raised. I don't know that this is a concern I have, but it's been raised to me. That the only place you can have certain sh kinds of shops that are adult-only shops is in an industrial zone. Do you want to mix those with commercial businesses? <laughs> Gotcha. I don't know the answer to that. I'm simply saying that that has been raised uh, as well. That doesn't mean much to me. I'm just telling you, but the bigger issue is that whatever city council decides, if this is a commercial business, it has an advantage in that it's in an industrial zone. Yeah, that, that was the competition argument I know Brody made a couple of meetings ago. Is, and I was intrigued by that and still am a little bit. But to some extent, I think, I don't know, is it our role to be the umpire? Well, yeah. What the market does, but. Well, I guess kind of going I'm off some of point. our other conversations, is this an area where we need to add zoning classifications to make it? Because he's clearly using the industrial portion of things, too, I would say, from, from the conversation we had, is he needs the industrial space to get the super suppers in particular, is what I remember of the shipping that out in the mass production oh, that he, he does. He does a lot of schools. So There's a lot of school meal prep there. Yeah, so to me it kind of makes sense if we had a hybrid use and that this would fall into it, is it necessary to form another zoning class? Because I know we're going to be looking into that stuff with the land use plan, or at least I'm hoping we do. Well, so some of the background that I can provide to you is his longest standing business is extra virgin cake. Mm -hmm. And our office has said, we've, we've recognized four different uses on that property. Extra virgin being the largest one. We told him we would consider you based on our current definitions as food production, preparation, canning, packaging <coughs> of food. Yeah. If he pays fifty dollar occupancy permit, it's good to go. That solved that. Mm -hmm. That was three issues. Uh, seven little cupcakes, mm -hmm. not his business. He's in he's in a jam because he's doing somebody else a favor and getting some rent money from them. So that's truly not his problem at, at this point. Mm -hmm. The bread company, same exact thing, not his business. He's kind of in a jam because he's brought somebody else under his umbrella. See, like subletting portions of, okay. No. So, yeah, are they using this commercial kitchen? Is that what's? Yes. Okay. And then the, the third one is, is Super Suppers. Um, and he does own that, but he would need to, there's there's reasons that it makes sense for all of those businesses to use the same kitchen facility because it's, it's expensive to duplicate those facilities mm -hmm. and get different licensing and all that stuff. So that all makes sense. Um, and they could all, essentially be considered to be food production under our code, which is permitted. But it's this retail component that he has. Like our business parks, if you drive back there, there's literally truck docks, there's pallets stacked up, there's no landscape violence. It's not yeah. an environment that was designed and created for in inbound traffic. It was for people to be you know, HVAC contractors and painters and widget makers to ship things out of those locations. So I did previously bring up the competition aspect of it. It's he's able, he has taken Super Suppers, Seven Little Cupcakes, and his bread company, and relocated them from places that they were permitted to be. One was in Harbor Town, that was Super Suppers. Seven Little Cupcakes has bounced around to a couple different retail locations. And he's taken conforming businesses and made them not conforming based on what he has done. Hmm. So I'm, I'm a little less sympathetic for that. I'm more conscious of the fact that he's able to run commercial businesses out of industrial land and pay a much cheaper rate where his competition or future competition may look and say, well, I have to be in a commercial zone. They may have chosen another city. They may have chosen not to go into that industry. 
they may have paid more rent in the appropriate place. And the other concern that I have is if we allow truly commercial folks like Super Suppers, some little cupcakes in the bread company to operate, to, to vend their goods from an industrial area, that displaces an actual industry, industrial space for a user that's actually industrial. So you know, we're gonna look and say, well, we don't have any vacancies because we've allowed our commercial users to take over the industrial. And if we get an HVAC contractor in there, or a painting company, or somebody who makes widgets, or cans peaches, or canned salmon, or you know whatever the businesses are coming towards us, we're gonna say, well, we don't have room for you because we've allowed this group that's allowed in so many other parts of the city to then creep into this very limited specialty area that we have that's designed for people like you. And that's my concern from an economic development standpoint. We can't house an industrial user now. That's one less that we can house because we have somebody who's inappropriately in their in their spot. Well, but again, to your competition argument, is he really, I mean, is he competing with restaurants and other food places? You don't go in there and sit down and eat. <laughs> well, I mean, I would say that if, Maybe, I guess you'd say competing with fast food, but I... Correct, which are located in the commercial district on you know, 25 yeah. or, you know, that same business. If somebody opened up, and I don't think this exists, but if they did, a business like Super Suppers, mm -hmm. they would look by right in our code, and they would locate somewhere in Harbor Town or on State Route 25 or in the River Place Shopping Plaza mm -hmm. and pay a much higher rate. And they might say, I don't, I don't want to pay this much. I don't need all of this. If there was the option for them to go somewhere yeah. cheaper, they would. Just same, same way that Greg chosen to do that so but from a competition standpoint though if i'm gonna if i'm gonna get into one of those subscription services and i'm gonna say i'd rather go to the nice place i see in harbor town or i'll drive into it it clearly is an industrial park i mean you know you're <laughs> you're next to the semis and everything else so but in any apart from all that stuff with these conditions the uh, the issues you're raising would not be an issue anymore we're just not entirely sure that I that I, can I live with those. Well, I, I heard he was at the planning commission though the night. I don't was. think I don't know if he understands. I don't know that he understood that either. That these additional conditions prohibit him from running the businesses as he currently runs them. Oh, okay. He did acknowledge that he would have to change his business model slightly. Okay. But I mean, he could conceivably make cupcakes there. Package them up in boxes, send them to Kazmaier, send them to Lamplight Cafe, send them to Churchill's, and yeah, sell them. Mm -hmm. Same way with the bread and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You could truly ship out Super Suppers from there, not have people come and pick them up. But he can't because Super Suppers is a national chain, and we were on the website today just to be able to come to, and it says, walk in to pick up. I mean, that's how it's advertised. So I think what it boils down to me, and if I'm looking at these three suggested uh, amendments here, is by adopting these, are we being more or less business friendly? Um, do, like, do does the does the business interest that we're prohibiting outweigh? You know, it's we're, we should be weighing this. We want to be business friendly. We want to bring new business in. By allowing him to continue, are we prohibiting that more than we're? I'm just here to legally say that, based on what I saw, if I were asked, could those businesses exist? With the what he has drafted and these three amendments created by Planning Commission, I would still say no. The businesses he has there could not exist as I saw them when I was there. That's just my legal opinion. Okay, and then and then it, to me it comes down to are other businesses complaining about how he's operating his competition directly? Um, and then also are there safety concerns? Other than that, I think he's running a successful business in the city of Perrysburg. And if people aren't complaining about it, let's try to work with them. It's kind of how I view it. Which is, if I can interrupt, which is what we tried to yeah. propose with. And he basically made a comment at the planning commission. Well, the cupcakes isn't my business. I mean, they're buying it from her, and then that would be that. Am I correct? We did that issue. If he stopped selling them out of the location. Right, right, right. The, the bread or the cupcakes? The bread and the cupcakes. Okay. I mean, but I, he didn't act like, to me, again, this is my opinion, and you guys can look at the video, like that was a... a a deal breaker kind of thing. Now the super suffers was a whole different issue because I think he's invested quite a bit of money in buying that. But I guess to your comment, Corey, my, my comment back to you would be at what point do you want people to follow the code? Well that's what I'm saying. I, I want people to follow the code, but if they're if we can amend the code, 
and it make it fit. That's why I think these hybrid uses are going to be really important. Mm -hmm. um, I, so that's to me what we should look into is, hey, is this something that we're really concerned about? We should always be concerned about what the code says. Mm -hmm. But if an amendment makes sense, we should also explore that. And if it's helpful, oh, this, so that's the way I'm looking at it. It's not. I don't like the way we're getting to this necessarily, but I also don't want to take away a way that. So it sounds like he's using the, the industrial kitchen in a way that makes sense, especially for the the bread bakery and the cupcakes. Uh, you know, they can't afford that kind of production, but it helps them produce what they're producing, and you know, it's another business, another small business that we're helping support as a city. So if we can amend the code to help something that no one's really complaining about other than code enforcement at this point, and I, I don't know that anybody is. I mean, to that regard, we've had inquiries um, in now existing businesses that have called to say, hey, you know, I'm specifically looking at this property to operate something similar. There's one on Front Street yeah. who, um, they, they, they don't, I think they have limited walk-up traffic, but they're permitted to do it in the C2 district. Um, there was there were people looking at buying one of the, um, a couple of the homes on Second Street, right, uh, just up from the uh, public bat the public restroom, um, for similar purposes. One lady wants to bag popcorn. Yeah. One somebody else makes something similar to Super Suppers, um, but all looking in districts that they're actually permitted in. And it's not to say that we don't have an abundance of commercial um, real estate that you can permit it in because we absolutely do. It's just, again, those similar aspects, I think he's looking to take advantage just because he can. And so it's not to say that, that there's no one complaining, but everyone else is looking at, well, what district can I actually operate in? Versus I want to get into this industrial park just because it's easier. In those kind of uses, I doubt if you said, hey, no, <clears throat> you can locate there or you can go over into that industrial park. Um, they, there's a building open between the HVAC contractor and the uh, painting shop. You, you go over there, and, you know, they want to be downtown. That's why those businesses. Well, one, I mean, the one she didn't necessarily, but it, they, they had a, some. Or, some or in a commercial area. Yeah, yeah they had some of the components that they needed for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But she was, she was like, no, I just need a space to pack these lunches or pack these dinners yeah. or these pre, these prepackaged meals. Yeah. Um, and she happened to take the, the spot on the corner of front in uh, Louisiana. It's with the mural, the one that has that mural. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. She, she's in that building. Hmm. Does Marsh's Buckeyes sell retail? Is there over there? Yeah. Marsh's Buckeyes is they, they are relocating? They, they were there, yeah. weren't they? But I'm they just curious, did, did they retail from there? Not as far as I'm aware. No, it was, uh, I understood from our discussions earlier that was just where they made them and then they <clears throat> drive them, ship them, whatever, to the I grocery know, store. Our expression is the same thing. Yeah. So this, the language, retail counter sales, and of course, per what Becky experienced, the Super Suppers is a subscription and or you pre-order and then you just go pick it up. That doesn't necessarily mean you're doing counter sales. No, but the sentence above retail counter sales would prohibit that. Note the catering is allowed without walk up or carry out service, yeah. so they would not be able to. Okay, walk. I, yeah. so you, well, I know. that's what you'd order your thing and you can't go get it. Yes, well, that's st stupid. I'm, I'm just telling you what how I believe these amendments. Well, I, would I'm, have I'm not really interested in this language. I, I think what we ought to do is talk to them and see what the issue is and see if we're in a point of agreement. Um, the only thing I would ask, and I believe he agreed to this, and it just didn't end up in these drafts, is that if you go with the set aside this extra page and just look at the proposal, yeah. that in catering on and off premise, we add the sentence after each of those that drive up windows are not permitted, because I don't want a drive through window. Right. I, I agree, a conversation. Yeah. And I think we already had kind of talked about that mm -hmm. the first time this came through, and you all were in support of that, 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 that addition, and then somehow it got lost in conversation. Cool. So what would you like us to do next, Council? Um, put it on the agenda for next month. We'll <laughs> talk to Greg in the yeah. meantime. That seems like a... I mean, I think we talked to work here. 
Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's, I, I, I didn't I, even know about this bread thing. <laughs> you know? Well, it's, it's obviously, it's a growing phenomenon. I mean, in terms of he's adding, it's like a shared kitchen. Well, yeah. I think, I think that, what he, yeah, he has a shared camp kitchen and super suppers is the staple. And then he's got enough foot traffic to help sustain a smaller bakery. I actually think extra virgin is the well, staple because that's okay. what's running the well, yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah. I think Extra Virgin runs the schools. I always forget they're a lot bigger than I, I realize. But. Yeah, at the meeting, you said that they were really expanding. Yeah, because they were going to buy some more of the, or rent some more. But to me, it makes, if this little cupcakes place, like to me, it, it, it's providing a great place for some people to start a business that may move yeah. to a brick and mortar in a commercial district later on because it makes sense. And I don't want to kill that business before they... So, so it, was, it was originally here at, at um, his little restaurant. Yeah. That's where they be, were being made originally. Yeah. Yeah. They were obviously were expanding Lamplight. Yeah. And then they needed the space for the restaurant, so they moved the business. Yeah. Which is a good thing. used to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think she was cooking her business in a home. And then she oh, was she? that location. And then she had a place out on Sandusky Street. By Three Meadows Drive. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a standalone shop there for Right, yeah. And I think she decided to save a little bit of money by using this kitchen here. Yeah. And then, like I said, I think it's great. I think the synergy between the small businesses is great. Just that retail component that I think the code takes issue with. Like I said, if she was baking them there using his services and license and all that, and was packaging them up, and in the morning would drive them out to Kazmaier's and Church Hills. In Lamplight Cafe or wherever else, whoever else would take them. Municipal building. Just And save a lot of city time. <laughs> and you could drop off here and place your order. order. I, I think that would solve all the Cupcakes and beer. <laughs> and then they would all qualify as food production, yeah. you know, which is really the benefit that they're all getting from that. Yeah. Uh, Becky, what, what did you say he said is the area that's going to really be growing? Which area of his business? Yeah, extra version. Extra version. Extra version. He's gotten more contracts for other schools. Well, that's that's the title he uses for a school business. Yes, the extra version. Because yeah, he said the same thing to us. That school business. I think he might be the only person, in, the only company in town that's doing that right now. Because I, I thought he was taking up more of those. Uh, I, I think those Manhattan's was. They went out of business, and he yeah. bought some there. Yeah, he bought a couple of papers. Because they were working out of. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. He said that. All right, well, let's try that. We'll put this on the, uh, what, what was our famous delay that took us three years? Uh, the uh, Arbor Mighty Arbor 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 train. <laughs> Here we go. This will replace it? All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, this will be more fun. The wall mural. I think that's next. <laughs> And I know it's, it's your, go ahead and give us your name, address, all that. Sure, Amy Siders, do you want home address or work address? Work address, 125 East Indiana Avenue in Perrysburg, Our House Bath and Kitchen Studio. And we have the mural here somewhere. Yeah, that's, there it is. Not just give me a whiteboard, I'll draw it for you. Who, who, who did this? Who, His name who is you? Terry Burton. Oh, is that in here somewhere? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if we have that in there or not. Terry? We never got to that point. Terry did this? Mm. Terry um, Burton from, from what, Bowling Green? What, Board of Elections? Different. Terry A. Burton. Okay. Very different Terry Burton. Oh, from the Board of Elections? That's what you're thinking. Oh, hey. Well, good for her. She's got a tail on the side. Yeah. Unless um, that Terry Burton has a penchant for, you know, fedoras and ascots and, yeah. you know, car hearts all at the same time. And is this, Brody, did you provide this to us? Or, or yes. Is, this just shows you the thousand foot radius. That question came up from Jonathan last night, so I was sure. Okay. All right. Um, I, I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I, I was, after council last night, we were asking, I, I don't it's not going to influence my decision. It's just curious why that side of the building is opposed to the other. Well, I'm not likening Terry's artwork to a Van Gogh, but if you're going to buy a Van Gogh, are you going to put it in your basement or are you going to put it in your front hallway? Okay. 
Um, also on that, I guess, at the west side of the building then, like where I park and by the library, um, there's a lot of piping. We've got low-hanging wires, and I also have renters that are upstairs that it would disrupt their entrance and exit and their windows on that side. Um, I would much rather, if this is something that we're doing for the city and passers-by, um, and our enjoyment as well. I would rather be able to see it all the time rather than kind of hide it on the backside or in the alley. So you'll see it coming down Indiana. Yeah. You'll go past when you're headed west. west and see it on that big white wall. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I just thought it was potentially more visible on the other side, but I get it. You're right. If there's pipes and yeah, wires. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of windows, and then there's the doorway to the apartments, and then it's back there. Um, there's also a bunch of bump outs on that side, and the other side is completely smooth with no okay. windows or anything as well. Okay. well um, and I understood, for you heard the discussion last night, mm -hmm. that, uh, apparently one of the Planning Commission members, John Wellstein, um, voted against it. I don't just because you know there can't be enough money within a thousand feet. Right. I apologize. I, I had heard a different reason, but. Oh, okay. I'm not going to ask you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was colorful, and oh. not in the not in the way that a mural is colorful. Oh, okay. So, so I'm, I am curious. The owner of the mural, as well as the building, is Waterhouse. Waterhouse Mommy Supply, yes. Yeah. I was just keeping it short. Sure. But because I wouldn't be concerned about their maintenance, uh -huh. but tell me a little bit about, about taking care of murals. How long do they last in, in that sure. time? Sure, no, absolutely. Um, going back to Mr. McCarthy's point too, as far as it being on the sunny side of the building and having full exposure, that helps keep everything actually in a better in better shape as far as like any moisture and all the drain pipes we have on the other side water damage is going to be one of the biggest problems with the mural um uh sherwin williams were you the last time when i talked about them or is this all new to you so sherwin williams is partnering with us and they recommended they went through step by step what they're going to be providing for us and for terry to use as far as the best materials they're doing an initial sealant, then we've got our color, and then we're doing an anti-graffiti sealant that goes on the top that, if you take care and maintain, can last 15 to 20 years. It's like their number one selling product to industrial and railroads. They'll use them on railroad trellises. Governments are usually the ones that purchase that product the most, and they absolutely said that that's what we should use on top. Um, you got to figure, too, Mommy Supply, you know, the Williams Brothers own that building. Right. You know, they have for a long time. They want it to be in great shape. I need it to be in wonderful shape because that's going to be the first thing that people see when they come to my showroom. You, you just mentioned something I didn't think of, but it's, it's something I should have thought of. Okay. You can put something on it to prevent graffiti? You do. Oh. All you have to do is essentially just go out with a hose, and it should sheet right off. It's an actual, I've got a one sheet. I thought I passed it out last time, but yeah, I've got a nice one sheet. The anti-graffiti coating. Can I bring it up? Well, maybe yeah, we ought to put that in the restrooms. Well, the kids keep graffiti. Oh, good God. Anti-graffiti coating. Wow. Yeah, so we're looking at 15 to 20 years as long as it's applied correctly. Um, I've got the local Sherwin Williams branch and then like one of their regional salespeople, David Jayquay, are on board with it and they're very excited to be partnering with us and giving us all those materials and supplies as well. Yep, remove with high pressure cold water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we shouldn't even need to use any chemical cleaners or anything on it, which is great because we're going up 16 feet in the air. So I don't want to go out there with a magic eraser. I already have like 35 bathrooms to clean on a weekly basis in there. So. <laughs> Uh, any other questions, committee, or comments? Well, I, I was just kind of talking to Brody on the side here, and I, I'll give my t I, thank you for doing stuff like this to buildings. I love seeing stuff like this come up. Um, my only issue is that it's preventing someone from doing the, something similar in a thousand feet. So I was making sure with him, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote to move this forward. Uh, but I wanted to make sure it didn't prevent or what process we would have to take. If someone else wanted to do something to beautify their building because yeah. uh, really my my problem is if someone else wants to do something like this mm -hmm. to me you are not explicitly trying to you know, it's not really it is a marketing thing but it's done in an artistic way mm -hmm. it's not saying h2o waterhouse it's yeah. nothing like a billboard okay yeah. 
Um, so if someone else wanted to do this, I would be totally open to, mm -hmm. I would hope we would find out about it and then amending the code so that they could do something like this because stuff like this is just so neat. Um, and I would hate to prevent someone else from doing that to their own well, building. And as another quick aside too, uh, we partnered with, I don't know if you remember the Painted Toilet, World Toilet Day project from last year that we did. I partnered with Caitlin Shawicker, who is the art teacher at Perrysburg High School. So I partnered with four of her intro to art classes and 100 kids helped us paint two toilets for World Toilet Day. So I hadn't gotten everybody super excited about it, not knowing how all of this would go. But Terry was going to need help with the mural, so I was going to contact Caitlin too and see if maybe some of her honors art students would want to help participate with this so we could keep the tie up with the yellow jackets there. And then my stepsister is a second grade teacher at Frank Elementary down here. And I wanted to have her second graders. And then I brought my third grader from Ottawa Hills who is itching to get a paintbrush. So I figure as far as community outreach and it, not just screaming Waterhouse come by a fancy shower from me. I mean, I just figured it would be a great way for parents and kids to be driving by and saying, hey, awesome. you know what I mean? I painted that sun or I painted that flower. Well, I think I'll be reaching out if I'm still involved in about 10 to 15 years on the new water tower design, <laughs> potentially on collaborating on that. This is beautiful. Love it. That Caitlin Shawaker, she was amazing. She gave 100 different kids in four classes a uh, diagram of a toilet and a yeah. toilet seat. They each That's had awesome. to design a theme. And then all 100 students voted to see which one they liked. They had two toilets from us and Kohler to work with. So there were essentially 50 pairs of hands on each of these. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, it was amazing. She was a perfect partner in that. That's why I would be an honor to art student. You give me that project, they'd say, what the heck do you Well, they painted aliens and planets and galaxies and threw glitter all over it. So they are high school students. Yeah, well. They only let me take art one in high school. That <laughs> was, was not accepted. <laughs> uh, but point, the point you raised, Corey, is kind of interesting because um, I'm not sure, you know, the code provision you gave us, Brody. It says landmarks featuring signage, but there I don't see a definition of a landmark. I mean, kind of what we were talking about. But what what makes a landmark? It's kind of supposed to be something. I think that orange guy would be a landmark. <laughs> uh -huh. Cross will fill carrots house. Yeah, arguably, yeah, it's, it's, it could be. Um, I think it was designed to be kind of a catch-all term of things that just weren't contemplated by the zoning code. Okay. Things that are a common reference, like. Um, I know when this came up, people said, you know, the, the clock tower in Levis, that's a landmark. Okay. Like, okay. You're going to call somebody on the phone and say, hey, meet me at Levis, I'm by the clock tower. Like, yeah. There's okay. certain things that are just very recognizable throughout the city. And um, the water tower. What about the water tower on 189? Is that, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to answer that. That too. Um, so, I mean, is this the equivalent of the Levis clock tower? No, but it's also something that you, you would reference if you were, if you came and you drove through our city, that's, that's a takeaway message. Yeah. So he was designed to create flexibility. Is it a perfect category? Probably not. Okay. But, okay. Um, I think the benefit is it allows something like this to happen. Whereas without that section, we might have said, you know, it's it's a graphic thing that's depicting a message. You know, therefore, it's signage and it's too big. Oh. This gives you the opportunity to kind of think outside the box. Like an identifier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Turn right at the faucet. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure that if someone came in, you know, that's within that thousand feet and says, hey, this is what we want to do our building. They don't just blanketly tell them, no, go away. We can't do it. Yeah. We already have this. So no, I get my, it. Yeah. It takes away the specialness if they're everywhere. Yep. But yep. I think if they're done with great purpose and great thought yep. and with enough involvement from the community, I mean, I think I see nothing but positives for it, obviously selfishly for my business because it's going to drive a lot of, you know, at least traffic during the, you know, planning and, and actual painting phases. But I mean, I just see it as another reason for people to come to downtown Perrysburg and kind of hit that end where they might stop where the library is, you know, traditionally. Yeah. We have so many people with the car shows and the music across the street in the park. So, I mean, I just think it's nice to have something for people to look at. Or I think the mayor, when we were here last time, said it'll be so nice because that's our busiest corner for pulling people over. <laughs> at, least, at least we'll have something really nice for them to look at while we're going through and writing tickets. I'm sure, I'm sure there will be plenty. Maybe they will, okay, maybe they will slow down yeah. now to look at the mural. I don't know if that's good financially or not for the city, so you we'll can look take up from that either way. Yeah, no, we need gawkers. 
There you go. We need them. Mm -hmm. I need them too. So perfect. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm fine with yeah. it. Yeah, that's fine. Good? All right. Okay. Thank you. This will Perfect. Be Thank you so much. We're very excited about it. Looking when forward to the gonna... final vote on the 17th. So, when's it going to be up yet? Don't tell, don't tell Corey when it's going up. Otherwise, he'll be there with his brush. I, no, I will not. Be. I'll be there with my Dora cup because we'll be that will be in district. I think. Yeah. I'll bring a lawn chair and a Dora cup. Yeah, I'll have this ready for Tuesday the 17th. Okay. Sounds Great. good. Perfect. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Give that to Bridget and say maybe we need to do that restroom with that stuff. Yeah. Where the kid keeps. Because I hear it's got, it got hit with graffiti again. We should do a graffiti. Oh, do one that you can use? Yeah. yeah. You sell the cans. Have you ever seen those? No. no they're they're awesome. awesome. Used to be on the old bridge. You watch people do graffiti. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very yeah. interesting yeah. to watch people do graffiti. I haven't seen the documentary yet. And then you just you use the same space. You just let them take over whatever they want. All right. Then finally, the rezoning requests, um, which I know you're here to to hear and participate if there are questions. But um, they're all going to multifamily residential. Um, and let me see here. Community shopping. Now. I guess Brody and Mark, to, to kind of the theme you were talking about before is obviously by doing this, you're taking a good bit of what we say about 16 acres out of potential air, areas for commercial development. Um, that's kind of the only question I had is that, I mean, as you look at where Karen Aid is today, this makes sense. It looks like penetration by the hotels and the commercial is about reached its natural uh, terminus point. So it's, it seems to make sense, but I don't, I don't know, did you give, guys give some thought to that? Or are we taking away commercial land we might need? We did actually. Um, the shopping plaza that has the China World Buffet, I think it's called, and the Casino de Carlos, that area, they've, they've struggled yeah. uh, to attract commercial folks because just the visibility they're, they're so far tucked back that people don't want to locate there in fact they had a couple of people on tap to locate in there and they ended up being made because of the bus to locate closer to the building so we really think that that's kind of the extent of that and we think now the effort is best to, to put rooftops near the businesses to make sure that the ones that are there survive because they have a captive audience there so i think it's logical um, like i said we, we really drew from the land use plan that suggested that that entire area be a mixture of commercial and residential, and we think that we've probably maxed out the commercial. Nobody's going to really want to locate behind the Casino de Carlos Plaza or behind um, the Panera Bread, the car wash, the hotel. Just, oh, and then you get the Holiday Inn across the street, that former right. property, that's that's going to blow it's up. A, it's a visual barrier. And, so. Yeah, okay. Are you doing one, two, and three bedroom? Okay, so this will be a variety. Fantastic. I, I think one of the needs pointed out in our land use plan was potential more residential multifamily yeah. spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, did, I didn't know I meant to today, because you said last night that even in the land use plan as we've got it right now in draft form, did you say it calls for something like this in that area? It does, yeah. It basically defines that area as a mixture of residential and commercial and we kind of already have the commercial there we have some of the residential so the in-between area could go either way and we got somebody here asking for it to go one direction over another and Ooh. it seems logical and you're 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 very correct that that strip shopping center that there's that struggled forever i mean they've had vacancies yep and, you know it seems like every half a year you see oh there's another storefront vacant and it's buy one sticks still out there pizza yeah yeah okay. it's there I think and the people that have been there have been there a decent amount of time at this yeah, point. Yeah, they're, they're kind of us. And that, but that Cucino de Carlos or whatever you call it, I think they're going downtown, oh, okay. so there's yeah. going to be another vacancy there. Well, that's their own doing. They haven't kept up on that shopping center, modernized like they should have. Yeah. But there's some truth to it that people don't want to locate that far off of Route 20. They want to be seen. And anything east of that, you're not going to see. So, so I'm just curious, functionally, will you have like 
since your carinate is in the middle, breaking in your development up, will you have two different offices, two different, or will you have? So, the choice homes? You choice, have other choice development. You have other developments in the Prairie's Bay? Yes. We, we, uh, we manage Preston Gardens and Levis Commons. Lake you Seven. manage or do you own? We, we own as well. Okay. We own, we own uh, Preston Gardens. We own and manage Lakes at Woodmont, right on uh, Thompson Road. We recently purchased um, Green Meadows Apartments in the Three Meadows. Uh, district. Um, it, that's the 74 unit uh, single story. Um, by Owens Community College, we have Owens Lake Commons um, as a community there. And we've been in Toledo now um, since 1985. My father was involved in Friendly Village, the, the, the big mobile home park uh, on Oregon Road. Then he later developed next to it the brand, the new Meadows of Perrysburg that was, you know, a very nice manufactured home community, and um, so we're we're quite excited about this because we know the market pretty well, and we know that uh, this particular property could quite easily easily absorb a high quality rental product. How many units? You were identifying 74 here, and so I'm just curious. We're, how we're, we're still we're still studying exactly how many. Um, you know, we're still studying the exact design. Um, a lot of it could be similar to, for example, residences at Carinade next to you know adjacent uh, south of the subject properties. Um, but what we're going to do is going to be something that. We're very proud of ourselves that we know the city will will like. Um, we don't. We try to make something that I always have the the, the easy smell test that I want to live there. I want to be proud of. If I could be there and feel good about it, that's what I want. So um, we'll make sure that it's done in good taste. And what, tell me again the. the uh, projects when Barry asked you here in town that you've got in town. What were those? Preston, Preston Gardens. In Preston Lewis Gardens. Okay. Lakes at Woodmont on Thompson Road, just lakes. just behind uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. Okay, uh, that's Lakes at Belmont. Lakes at Woodmont. Woodmont. Yep. Okay. I've never buy it, but I... yep. Um, Green Meadows, which is in Three Meadows. Right, literally on the corner of 75 and um, it's about 20 on the okay. north, northwest corner. Yep. Um, Owens Lake Commons. Is that the one on the on the east or west side of Oregon Road? Uh, oh, Owens Lake. Yes. That's on Tracy Road. Our property is on Tracy Road. Okay. It, you know where Tracy Creek is? Sure. That's the very large apartment yes. complex. Across the street from Tracy Creek yes. is Owens Lake Commons. Okay, that's where you are. At one time, it was a lot more student-based. I was going to say it's very student-based. It was. Yeah, we've transitioned that away and made it more conventional and family. And you said, I don't know, it was you or your dad, did the, the manufactured housing a project here in Perrysburg, um, in Perrysburg Township, Perrysburg Township, Me Meadows of Perrysburg. Okay. Yep. That's do you, it. That's do you guys do any uh, like nightly Airbnb type uh, advertising as well in those? No. Okay. No. The, the Lakes of Woodmont. I think they. You're the prior owner did. Oh, Steve Mitchell. He did. I, yeah, we don't Only from an insurance standpoint, that's pretty people would be housed long term. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm fine. You okay? Yeah, um, for it. I'm okay. Yeah. We'll, we will then recommend approval to council and uh, 
I'll try to get it to council for May 17th. Okay, sounds good. Um, Great. And I, I don't know. Do, are you looking to get this thing launched pretty soon? If the costs weren't so all over the place, I would answer absolutely. Yeah, but, 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 but you're absolutely prepared to launch at three or four other different places, I see. We are we're studying that when we could. But. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, okay, we might think about passing this as an emergency measure. I don't see any reason to have this sit for 30 days. Yeah, sure. no. So, all right. The, well, can we do the special approval of this as an emergency too? Uh, oh, for the uh, landmark signage? Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. We'll, um, we'll recommend to council on the 17th. You're obviously welcome to be there. You might want to just to make sure something doesn't go wrong or, or to help with questions. Sure. Um, so, I wouldn't expect there to be any issues, but people might really have questions about what course you're going to be doing, and they'd probably like to hear what you just told us. So happy to do it. Okay. And what what time is it on the uh, six thirty on May seventeenth? Okay. In this room that you've now become very accustomed to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I have no other business. Does anyone else? I do not. No, I did want to let Councilman Van Hoosen. The door will be on that docket as well, and the store came out of safety. I will probably put it under safety. The legislation is so that you're aware. Thank you. Appreciate it. You have to be surprised. <laughs> That'll be fun for you, Barry. Yes. Okay, then we stand adjourned.